Hello, everyone. Hope everybody had a wonderful day as we did. And I hope everybody out there had a blessed and wonderful Mother's Day. It was a, uh, a pretty day here. We rather had, warm. Rather warm. We had a little family come by this morning, so everything was good. And I uh, was able to see some grandbabies. Yeah, they're headed back home. Yep. And we were able to get a lot done in the garden today. I did. I got half of my drill irrigation in my new brace beds and half planted. So you're making it a point to put this irrigation system in by yourself. Yeah. I did have to ask for a little no, bit. No, but you did. Yeah. You've done really good. You've, yeah. So this raised bed irrigation system we got is real easy to put in. She's making that point, put hers in all by herself. I, I did film most of it today. Did you? Yeah. So you I even did. dug out the hole and everything. Yeah, except the last one. So the last one I had to get out of here for that one. So. Yeah, and then you had to drill a hole. You couldn't do it. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Where's everybody at tonight? Trinidad, hello. Trinidad Tobago. Is that what mm. you said? <laughs> That's good enough. Central Florida's represented North Carolina. Yep. Mm. From the hills and hollers from the Ozarks. Hope everybody had a good Mother's Day. I had an excellent one. Hottest day we've had this spring today. Yeah. The yeah. hottest day we've had this year. And I, I can tell it. I, I had to be a little careful out there. I We've been going for the last few days in my garden. Yeah. Got a little out of control. I had to get back and do some serious weed control. I had a lot of you work. You did. Had to stake up some tomatoes. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it rained while we were gone, so we didn't have to worry about watering. Um, took a little vacay with your grandbabies. So I got back, and, of course, every time you go and you get back, and weeds have just jumped in your garden. So I had to get the wheel hoe out there and work on those. But I was going to tell everybody – I'm going in the morning. I am moving into flower mode in the ah. morning. So, so, you know, we're gardening. we got to think way in advance. Mm -hmm. I've got some collard plants that I need to take out. And I'm going to put flowers back in a lot of these places because I've got my okra planted. So i got enough okra planted. you got got uh, roselle planted. Mm -hmm. Do you know the white roselle is blooming? Yep. Is that not crazy? It is. This weather... It's just totally crazy. So I ordered off of, I think it was Etsy, some white roselle seed. And Which you they, can't find anywhere. You can't find anywhere. And it says it's daylight system, and it is blooming. Yep, crazy. crazy. So I've got my 162s. I went and filled up me three 162 trays, and I'm going to plant flowers in the morning. Okay. Uh, we got a new girl. Mm -hmm. And she's coming in in the morning. Me and her's going to look over the flower selection and make a choice, make some uh, choices there. I think I want to plant the, the peach pro cut because we've never grown that. Peach pro cut. You grown some of that? I'm going to grow that. I think I'm going to grow teddy bear because I haven't grown teddy yeah. bear in a long time. And I'm going to plant some zinnias. Uh, and just a little FYI out there, we got some new zinnias that are on the way. Oh, really? We are. The we, Queenie? The Queenie series. We got, we're going to have limited supplies of those. We've got some of those coming. It's going to be in probably three or four weeks. So I don't have any of those plants, but I am going to plant some, uh, some zinnias and plenty of sunflowers to transplant out because I can grow those zinnias and uh, sunflowers in about four weeks, three to four weeks easy. Mm -hmm. So uh, those will be perfect to uh, fill in some spots out there in my garden with some other stuff. Because my potatoes are going to be ready before long. Mm -hmm. So when my potatoes come up, I want to go back and plant flowers behind mm -hmm. it. <clears throat> Our neighbors, shout out to Val and Eddie, they dug their potatoes and cooked them for dinner night. They delicious. Had, oh, they were delicious. And squash. We had stuff. Poblanos. Stuffed squash, yep. And um, potatoes. It was delicious. I mean, them new potatoes are awesome. All right, we got Alabama's in the house. Who else is in the house? Scroll back up there. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Scroll back up a little bit. Let's see. 
Live Oak, Florida, Joel. Good to have you, buddy. Texas. Michigan. Michigan. Arkansas. Arkansas. Central Alabama. North Louisiana. Texas again. Long Island, New York. Michigan. Arkansas. Western Kentucky. Kansas. Wow. Everywhere. Yep. All right, so let's get into some gardening questions. Let's talk about it in a minute. Brackets, pantry, dealing with aphids. We're spraying them with water. Kill them. No. Just about anything will kill them, but just plain water won't. You need to mix something in there with it. Don't dishwash detergent to kill them. Anything will just about kill these soft body insects such as aphids. <clears throat> I feel like I'm losing my voice. Oh, I <clears throat> Somebody put on our group the other day that they was giving up on killing aphids. And I thought to myself, wow. That's the easiest thing to kill. Easiest thing to kill. In fact, sometimes they will leave a sock light on their own. But the aphids are easy to kill. You just got to get contact on them. David says, temps in the mid-80s and very humid. Yep. Will my tomatoes set blooms? Yes, they should, David. Should be a good tomato weather right here perfect made us love this warm weather just make sure if you, you stay in humid keep some fungicide sprayed on there <clears throat> mm. spooky says it's having good results with chives speaking of herbs you planted a lot of herbs today. i did a lot of herbs the lemon drop which is also called a toothache plant um whorehound mother's wart um oh gosh pretty much all those that's in our collection um i hope they do well they had really got root bound because i was waiting on the beds to get ready and one thing you did that that i didn't know you was going to do you planted peanuts in your raised bed i did you had uh, planted some peanuts because we'd had some people complain they didn't germinate. So we always test it out and see. And um, they did fine. They did fine. So I said, why? So I don't know about transplanting peanuts, but we'll see. Yep. Should be fine. What state? We're in South Georgia. We're uh, about an hour above Tallahassee, Florida. So we're in South, South Georgia. Some people would say South Central. Or some people say southwest. We're kind of in the middle of the state. We're in 8B? Yep. I wonder how hot it was today. I drank three of the, the big <laughs> thermoses of water. Yeah. And I still think I got dehydrated. Yeah. Yeah, I had to take a couple breaks myself. <laughs> you took about a two-hour break. Yeah, I was, I was wore down. Vicky says... It, in Wichita, Kansas, four inches of rain today in two hours. Wow. wow. We weren't here, but uh, Friday we got some bad hail. Not where we live, but about two or three miles down the road, got some really bad hail. We uh, seem to escape it here. But this time of the year, you're going to have those thunderstorms start to roll in. And some of those bad storms come up. We enjoy and we needed the rain. We just don't need any bad weather. No, the tomato plugs are gone. All right, Terry Foss, am I reading that right? No, Terry for for all for all. <laughs> you <butchered> Terry, <laughs> we're just gonna skip your last name tonight. <laughs> what kind of matters can you recommend to plant in the hot, humid climates of South America? Oh wow, wow, it's a tough one there, Terry. I don't know much about South America. I would think. Any of these, uh, I would think, this is what I would think. I would think Florida 91 would do good for you. I would think any of these good heat set varieties would do good. Uh, Red Snapper, Hossinator, Florida 91. I'm trialing the new one called Myrtle. I'm not sure about it yet. It's supposed to be a good, a good one for the South. But those are the ones I think would, would grow well for you. Red Snapper, Hossinator, Florida 91. Did you answer that? Tim Peters says, do you have any tomato plugs left? We do not, Tim. Last week was the last week on the tomato plugs. Daniel says, we'll be planting our, we'll be, uh, 
be dig Daniel Harbin says, be digging my potatoes in a week or so. Daniel, I'm not far behind you. I'm right there at you. I noticed today when we left Wednesday, my plants was looking really good and they were yelling up some yeah, today. So, I think that well mine I thought was getting ready to dig, but then that rain came while we were gone and they've kind of rained back, back up. up. Spooky says, how do you get plants to flower fast when you plant from seed like lemon avocado? Mm. Mm. I don't know much about lemon avocado, Spooky. I'm sorry about that. Hello from Central Arkansas, Robert. Nice to have you, buddy. Macon, Georgia. Ah. Mm. All right, Katie says, I have very sandy soils. When it comes to good rain, my plants are covered in sand afterwards. Is this something I should be concerned with? Not really, Katie. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Uh, you can put some mulch down to help a little bit with that. Most of the time, uh, you really don't want the water splattering back up on the plant if you have old plant residue down there, which can harbor diseases. But if it's just sand, I wouldn't worry about that a whole lot. If it is, becomes a concern to you, use some type of mulch. How do you know when your potatoes are ready? Yeah, when they start getting, the vines get real yellowish and they start dying over and dying back. It's time to get those potatoes done. They'll turn really yellow. Mm -hmm. Look like they're really wilted. Yep. Some Bama J, they had new potatoes and collars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was good stuff. Spooky says eats ginger for the sore throat. I got a, a ginger a tincture down there. You mm. need to try. All right. So I'm getting a lot of ants in my raised beds. It's the best thing. Diametaceous earth. Uh, not my opinion. Diametaceous earth works really good for cut worms. And it will kill some of the workers on the ant beds. The best thing you can use is a product that we got called the Come and Get It Fire Ant Bait. Now, the thing about the come and get it fire and bake, it has to be used correctly, but it is a natural product that will kill the entire colony. You just have to make sure once you open it up that you sprinkle it out there and you use it all then. It doesn't keep very well once you open it in the bag. Also, you want to put it out during a hot part of the day. What happens is the workers take that and carry it back to the mom or the queen, and she eats it, and they die, and the colony collapses. And the active ingredient is spinosad, which is a natural product. So it's very safe to use around your vegetables and your raised beds. It does take three or four days, so it's not an instant thing. But that's what I would recommend for your raised beds for growing your vegetables. Carl and Porter, what do you need for canning <clears throat> Kentucky Wonder Beans? Um, when I can my beans, of course, you need the pressure canner because you have to do it under pressure, you can't water bath them. Um, and I just add water and salt, and the salt is optional, but it helps with seasoning. Um, but if you go to um, the, I use the ball um, blue book, um, you can find it online. And they have, it's, it's easy. I can't remember off the top of my head how long you have to do it. Spooky says, cow manure, how do you feel about using it? Cow manure is fine just as long as the hay they consume. You don't have to worry about feed, the grain feed. But if they consume any hay, you have to be concerned about what that hay field was sprayed with. If it was sprayed with uh, any of about a handful of chemicals there that will have residual in it that could kill your garden, believe it or not, it can live through that cycle of the cow. So you have to be concerned about how clean the hay is. If they got good clean hay that hadn't been sprayed, cow manure. Was it gray zone? Pickle round. Pickle round, Pickle round which is a, a, a ingredient in gray zone. And there's a couple more out there that's uh, pickle round is the most common one. Oh, David, Lucas, good deal, buddy. I appreciate this. Should I pull suckers off my cucumbers? Seen a video a YouTuber made in the last week talking about sucker and their cucumbers. That is new to me. I didn't know they had suckers. I didn't either. 
trimming or pruning your cucumbers in my book is a complete waste of time. There is hundreds, if not thousands of acres of cucumbers growing around here and nobody prunes or suckers or cucumbers. First time I ever heard of it, I, I wouldn't worry about it. I think it's a good waste of time. Oh, Adam's Greenhouse, welcome to the house. Hope y'all guys are doing good. I'm sure you're in the middle of getting everything planted up there because Mother's Day is about the time for you guys to start planting, I understand. So yeah. going to plant your sweet potato slips this week. Yeah. Yep, I got mine growing, so we'll be planting ours before long. Yeah, our daughter was down, um, and she said today was the past today she could plant anything. And she lives up in Dayton. Barry Brown, do you guys have Hossinator uh, plugs for sale? No, Barry. Last week was the last week we had them. If you want to plant you some, they grow up pretty quick this time of year. So you can order some seeds. Uh, oh, here's a good one right here. That Roger Box says, my wind peanuts are not germinating either. My other variety is doing fine. Planted at the same time. Roger, we did two tests on that, and we got really good results. However, I will tell you one thing I did notice. If they stay waterlogged sometimes, they will. Um, sometimes the peanut will rot if they stay waterlogged. I did plant some at the tray, and I noticed the tray was draining, so I had to move it. And once I moved it, they did fine. Uh, contact uh, customer service. They'll take care of you. Uh, we we germ tested them twice. I did the germ test in the, uh, the greenhouse. Everything worked out fine. Hmm. John says, do you guys sell horseradish root? If not, do you know we can get any one or two pieces to try? I do not, John. You know, there's a lot. Of, somebody mentioned wasabi while ago in the yeah, comments over here. I, you know, person. there's a lot of things out there we've never grown before. We just started playing with this turmeric right here in the last week or two. I'm going to plant some of this turmeric, but there's all kind of things out there that we've never even tried before. Horseradish, wasabi, all that kind of Ginger. stuff. Ginger. Ginger. Yeah, mm -hmm. lots of things we've never tried before. I do not answer your question. I do not. Sorry. Have you freeze dried any tomatoes? No, but that is on my list as soon as we get some going. Um, I definitely want to do that. The latest thing I did was squash, and it was really good. I'm not going to answer that one. Hi, hey, Becky V from Norman Park. I hope you guys got settled in this afternoon. Thinking about y'all. Yep. Philip Merritt wants to know when to add calcium to tomatoes. All right, Philip, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can do it at plant time, and then I would recommend doing it at bloom set. If you don't do it at plant time, you need to start doing it at what we call bloom set. When you first start seeing blooms, you want to start adding calcium. And then I do it on about a two-week rotation after that. So every two weeks after bloom set, and then again at bloom set. And you can put some in there at plant. And I'm not sure how much the one we put in there at plant actually helps. Another one at bloom set works extremely well. How much horse compost can I put on a garden that's not been planted for five years? Horse compost is very low in uh, nitrogen, you, lower than cow manure, so you could pretty much load up horse manure. It's not going to, it has potential for burn, it's very low. And it has a lot of uh, a lot of organic matter, of course. Horse compost is good there. Again, make sure you got a clean hay source that the horses were fed. If that, hey, one of the best things out there. And it's hard to overdo it with horse compost. People are talking about jumping worms. <laughs> Any experience? I have not heard of them. I have red wigglers in, in my compost bed. I'll have to look that up. Jumping worms. 
John says, I have a hundred gallon grow bag with potatoes in it. You know, we've been growing a lot of stuff in grow bags mm -hmm. in the last couple of years. I am finding mushrooms growing in it. Is this okay? If not, how do I get rid of them? I would, I would say that you probably got a, too much organic matter in your soil and you got too much moisture. So you could let them dry out a little bit. And I think that'll take care of your mushroom problem. And maybe next time, try not to put quite as much organic material in there, kind of uh, use less organic, whatever you use there. And that should take care of that. Mm. John says, just got 20 tomato plugs from you. Have them planted there, doing amazing. Well, thank you, John. I hope they turn out well for you. All right, Sonia, she says, and she's talking about yeah. compost contamination. Yeah, I'm going to have to look that up. Uh, I'm going to have to look that up. There is a couple of new ones out there that uh, the period, I'm not sure about that. But uh, there's a couple of new ones out there used in hay fields and in forestry stuff that's really bad about contamination. She's not talking about period. Uh, well, I can look that up. I'm going to look that up real quick while you catch next. Right. Wait a minute. Let me get the spelling on that. Spell it for me. A M I N O. P I E R A L I D. I don't know. Okay. Brad says a go hostinator tomato. Yep, she's mm -hmm. right. Yep. What is it? It's a new one of those newer ones that they come out with that is a uh, broadleaf weed. Broadleaf weed. Let's see what the trade name is. Okay, it's in a, it does the same thing. I've talked about chlorpyrrolete a lot, which is the, the one that contaminates your compost. I've talked about pickle ram. Now, triclopyr is also listed, but it's not as bad about contamination. It's pickle ram and chlorpyrrolete, but, but that one right there is one of the newer ones that she mentioned, amocorpyrrolete, and it is a bad one for contamination too. Let's see if I can find the brand name. Mm -hmm. I'm not as familiar with it because it's one of the newer ones. But you definitely want to know where your hay source is coming from and you want to ask them, what was it sprayed with? Okay. It's sold under the name Grazon. I didn't realize that. Oh, that is Spanish. nice. Stuff. Pickle Ram is the... Uh, is, is one of the... Used to, to put Grazon plus P in that Pickle Ram... They also use it in the forest industry. That's some bad stuff. It'll hang around forever. Got my sweet potatoes yesterday. Got them planted. Can I trellis them? Because I planted in a raised bed. But I don't think they'll grow the trellis. No, nah, let them run. They're runners. They're going to run this way. They're not going to run up. So just let them run this way. Now, Big Bear, let me tell you a little something about sweet potatoes. You probably didn't know. And I've heard this for several years, but we tried it last year. Those greens mm -hmm. on the sweet potatoes are Awesome as a stir fry. So it's once those sweet potatoes start running, they get those nice tender leaves or, or sprouts on there, cut some of those off, wash them, and do you a stir fry with them. And I can promise you, you're going to find something that is extremely delicious. Man, it's just awesome. What all do we put in there? Olive oil, a little sesame seed or something like that? Yeah. Good. Like an Asian stir fry. Richard Keaton from Southern Illinois, doing the Florida weave. You did that. Was it yesterday? I did some today. <laughs> you did your peppers today, didn't it's, you? It's rich. That, it's hard on an old man on that first weave because you get to get in there low. Now, the one after that's not that tough on me. But that first one hurts at all. Is my uh, my dad calls it the old gristle right there a little bit in the back. <laughs> my gristle's hurting really bad today. The wasabi was given to me by a friend, two plants, growing great, but I'm clueless what to do. Keep mm. us updated. Yeah, let us know. Tammy says, ginger's my next herbal to try to grow. My turmeric was here from the early 1970s. Wow. And it's doing great. That's awesome. I need to plant turmeric on my beds down there. 
Yeah. I don't think I would plant it in one of your beds because I think it needs more shade. I think it'll tolerate more shade. I think you need to plant it over by itself because it, it takes a year. So I would not put it. I thought about doing it in our grow bag. Yeah, that would be fine. Mm -hmm. The Real 1970s. I heard about your podcast store from Scott with Black Gumbo Garden in South Texas. Happy I found y'all. Well, Welcome. thank you. Welcome. Glad you found us too. All right. Uh -oh. Teresa says, my snapdragons have not germinated. I planted two different times and nothing either time. Should I try again? Yeah. Excuse me, Tassie, Timmy, Teresa. You need to reevaluate what you're doing. Maybe you're using a bad pot and medium, or maybe you don't have the right kind of drainage. So I would, I would. And don't plant them too deep. There are some that you just barely, like I, I just sprinkled them on top of in the container and just scratched it around a little bit. They don't much soil on them at all. Yeah. Evaluate your and plant it did. Methods. It did take. I want to say I planted mine outside in the early spring. I want to say it took about two weeks um, because the temperature is just really cool. <laughs> can you put straw over your peppers <laughs> while growing to keep the weeds down? Yes, you can put straw over your peppers. <laughs> But you need to let get your peppers germinated and come up first. You don't need no. to put straw on top of your peppers before they <laughs> before they germinate. I bet I know who that is. Yeah, I do. Too. So one of our neighbors planted some peppers, and somebody said they were not going to germinate direct seed them. And I told her, "Well, Go ahead hold and do on it. just a minute." She direct seeded these things in a in a little raised bed, and she put straw on top hay. of them, hay on top of them after she planted them. And I told her that was not best practice. The best thing to do was not put anything on top of them like mulch before they come up. But they did. But them. they did come up. Okay, they did come up. <laughs> Can I use chicken calcium as long-term calcium source for tomatoes? It's basically oyster shell that's pelleted. Cheryl, absolutely. Just keep in mind, it may not be a Available that plant when you first put it out there, but you, you plan way in advance and put it out there maybe a year in advance and build your calcium levels up. Yes, it will be available to that plant. How many rounds of tomatoes do y'all do? Carla, we normally do. I'm doing three rounds in the springtime. I'm glad I did. Uh, because I'm, I'm a little worried about that first plant because the cool nights we had, and it finally warmed up enough mm -hmm. now. I was a little concerned about that. I got three different plants now. I won't do any more because July I get here and it'll just burn them up. Then we'll turn around and we'll plant us a fall crop in July. We will see this fall crop. Sonia says, I'm hoping to put six to eight new beds. I have to do rays, but not with sides. I build at the beds on a very hard mulch. My question, do you think gypsum will help? Mm -hmm. I do. Sonia, there's two things I would do. I would put as much organic, good compost in there as I could, and I would add gypsum. Those two things there will help break up and make that soil lighter and better. Gary says, hey, guys, my tomato plugs are doing extremely well. The red snapper are really showing off. Oh, it's a good one. My first planting is just red snapper. My second planting is hallucinator. And third planting, I've got a monorage of different varieties in there. So, yep, red snapper is definitely a good one. Luke says, is 2,4-D bad for the garden if it's being sprayed on hay fields? 2,4-D, no. 2,4-D within itself doesn't have residual. So if 2,4-D has been sprayed on the hay field and that hay has been gathered and fed to the animals, you're going to be okay. It's these other chemistries that you have to be, be worried about. There's just a handful of them. You can Google them. Uh, one we mentioned a while ago, triclopyr, grazon, chlorpyrrolid, and a handful more. There's about five or six of them there that you have to be really concerned about. 2,4-D within itself is okay we don't have any residual 
Is there anything that works well to grow with okra? I have a row of beans at okra now. What can I put in after the beans are done? Well, I would say flowers. I move on into flowers after that. I use sunflowers and zinnias. That's what I'm doing, the same exact thing. I'm planning ahead for that, and that's what I'll be moving into, is some flowers. How deep should I put drip tape in my corn and tomatoes? Well, I'd say about two to three inches deep is normally what I do because I plant my corn right on top of my drip tape. So that's what I normally do. Frank, can a daikon radish penetrate a heavy clay soil? This stuff is like concrete. Frank, daikon radish is something I grew every year. This is just purely amazing to watch these things grow. They will get this. Can you see my hand mm -hmm. there? Yeah. They will get that deep in the soil. And they'll let us grow out of the soil some too. You can eat them. They make very good. I mean, you can eat them just like you would any other radish. Things grow like crazy. And yes, they will penetrate heavy clay soils. And another good thing about them is they're easy to extinguish. So when you go in there to till these things up, they till up really good. They decompose. And you can get back in there and get your soil worked up so you can plant. I'm a big fan of the daikon radishes. One more. Mom's on her second time. Is yours your second or third? I just put my third on there today. Yep, they jumping like crazy. I agree. I just added Red River peas to my new Louisiana garden. Planted some type of lagoon in every space to help build the soil. I planted black eyed peas from the store. I bought about eight types of okra. Wow, you're gonna be busy. Yeah, the Red River pea. Let me talk about that just a minute. It is what we classify as an indeterminate or a vining type pea. So you gotta give it plenty of room. Grows like crazy, just vines everywhere. Unlike some of the other varieties, they kind of stay down. So those red rippers are going to put on a lot of vine. Got to give them plenty of room. They make a great cover crop. Also excellent to eat. We, mm -hmm. we, we harvest them, yeah. eat them all the time. Caitlin says, how do you can pasta sauce? I think, pretty sure there's a YouTube video from last year where I did spaghetti sauce. Um, Unlike tomatoes, if you put in onions and peppers in there, you have to can it. You can't just water bath it. But if you search our YouTube channel, you'll find my spaghetti sauce recipe. You would do it like it. My tumor gets early sun and lunch on is shaded in the Eva house. Hmm. Tammy, I think that's wonderful. I think it's perfect. Now, one of the growers that I talked to that grew a lot of turmeric this last year said he also had good luck growing in full sun, which we don't read much about that. Most people, most recommendations says part shade, but he said here in the South, he did have good um, results growing it in full sun if you have it irrigated. But I think partial shade is the way to go. Any advice advice on getting rid of nut sedge? Oh. It's tough. One of the toughest ones things in the garden just to stay after it, aggravate it to death. You know, I've never done it, but I've heard people have success with turning hogs in there and letting them root up and eat those hogs. So you may want to try some different things. It is problematic, I guarantee you. <laughs> Roly pellets, how can I control them? Well, growing with huts and roly polies, if I'm not mistaken, actually eat organic matter. So they're not necessarily a bad thing. I don't know that they're going to cause any damage to your garden. They're just eating that excess organic matter in your garden. So I wouldn't be highly concerned with them. I don't think you're going to view them as a pest problem in your garden. Oh, that's Tammy says, Can I plant so Cheryl says she has tomatoes in her green stalk planter. So it's a small area. This is my first year with a green stalk. Cheryl, I wrote down and ordered me a green stalk last week. Haven't planted anything, but the, I have not put it together. <laughs> but what I want to do in it, did you plant those tomatoes? Those small dwarf tomatoes. No, I got to plant you some more. I'll do that mm -hmm. more. That's what I'm going to grow in my So, Cheryl, we have a series of tomatoes called the Little Birdie Series. That is these just real small yeah, tomatoes. Like small. small. They mature 
They don't get this big. Uh, Ruby? Is it Ruby Delight? No, yellow? Red Robin, Rosie Finch, uh, and <laughs> I was totally he was way off. And something yellow. Yellow Canary. Yeah. These things were wonderful in the green stalk. So we're going to plant Mama Hall. I got plenty of them growing in containers. We get a lot of questions about what you can plant in the green stalk. This, I think this is a no-brainer to plant these little birdie series in the uh, – in the uh, and you can plant one of each one. So the red robin is, is that bright red tomato, uh, rosy yellow finch. canary, of course, is yellow, and the rosy finch is that pink tomato. Cause you can plant those side by side, tomato, yeah, this big, they nice, sweet, eat very good, so it's perfect for growing. And, and, and the green stalks, lettuce does well in those mm -hmm. two, yeah, strawberries, strawberries, lettuce. yeah. A lot of your herbs do really well, mm -hmm. you, especially your leafy herbs, yeah. All right, do y'all know what type of black in store bags? I plant them every year. They have a greenish purple hole and peas are on top of the plant. There's only a couple of type of varieties. That, oh, oh, boy. I just went over this with a grower about two months ago. There's only about two major varieties of black eyed peas out there, and I can't tell you what they're off the top of my head, but both of them's pretty much the same. There's not a lot of difference in either one of them. I talked to one of the... Uh, seed breeders about that and they that's it it's just a couple of different varieties so there's these uh, it's going to be one of those two what kind of tomato is good to plant a 10 gallon pot in southern texas yeah. i would plant a determinant or maybe a dwarf determinant now we got some container choice varieties on our website that would be really good for that if you didn't want to grow the little series if you wanted a regular bigger tomato uh, container choice would be a, a good one for that right there my granny said that papa that was my papa's name used to use seven dust and powder in liquid form do you recommend it eric i have used a lot of seven dust in my time liquid and powder i mean a bunch of it seven dust is works extremely well I do not use seven anymore. And the reason I do not, carbonate is the actual active ingredient in seven. Now, if you go to the big box store, seven nowadays has got a, it's a brand. Seven could have several different things in it. But when you say seven dust, as you say here, we're talking about carbonate. Carbonate, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's the active ingredient there. The reason I do not use it anymore, because it is one of the most toxic things out there to bees. And we like to encourage bees in our garden, honeybees. We have honeybees here. We love to encourage our pollinators. And that's the reason I am a big proponent of not using seven dust or liquid form in my garden. It's just a no-no for me on kind of that reason. There's better options out there that's a lot more pollinator friendly than seven dust. You got on your soapbox. I did. <laughs> What's your best home remedy for weed killer? The wheel hoe, right? <laughs> yeah, Big Bear. I have uh, I've used a lot of these vinegar mixes with salt and dish soap, and I ain't had any. I, I've tried. We've had a lot of companies send us samples to try of these organic weed killers. I've not had any results with any of them. We use mechanical controls. It's just just an old fashioned hoe. Stephen wants to know how much garden space do you need to plant a hundred sweet potato slips? Okay, so this is what I normally recommend on sweet potato slips. If uh, I plant them about 12 inches apart because I plant them on a drip tape and my emitters are 12 inches apart, so that's the way I plant mine. So you need a hundred foot row. That being said, you could plant three 33 foot rows or you could plant two feet to foot rows, but I normally plant mine on a foot apart. As far as my row spacing goes, anywhere from three to four foot will, will be fine. Four foot would probably be the, the best. Four foot apart, inch apart in the row. Another calcium question. What can I use on my tomatoes for calcium that I can buy to hit with blossom in rot? We have a product, Barry, that is called Gypsum that we sell. Now, there's a lot of products out there that you can buy that 
that I don't recommend. And some of these sprays do not work. If you go to the big box store, you're going to find Blossom Enrod sprays. Calcium does not move backwards. So it's not going to do any good. They're just going to take your money and waste your time. If you know of anybody around that is building a house and they have any gypsum or sheetrock excess or you find somebody that's doing a remodel job and they got the scraps that they cut out there, if you take those scraps and crush them, them, crush them up and put them out there, it'll do the same thing as the gypsum we sell. If you want to buy a product, you can buy a gypsum. Or if you don't want to buy anything, the scrap sheetrock pieces, just take a hammer, crush them up, work fine. I've grown little birds in my green stall. Yeah, I can't wait to do that. Yeah. Being attacked by flea beetles already. Can you help? B, they can be problematic. Uh, stay after them pretty good. Uh, we got a product called Bug Buster, too. If you really want to get serious with them, that would work on them pretty good. But flea beetles on our leafy greens are tough. Here's a good question. Vicky wants to know, need to put vegetables on a fertilizer schedule. How did I get started? Been writing down on calendars when I fertilize. Just Google each one or can I follow a rule of thumb? Vicky, I wish I could tell you it was that simple. We have a place on our website called the Hoss University where we give some general guidelines on how to fertilize individual different crops. So you could go there and kind of get an idea. But here's the problem, Vicky. Different soils take different type of fertility. Clay soils don't take as much as sandy soils like what we have. So no, there's not a rule of thumb on this. You're just going to have to play with it a little bit yourself. Get some good information like you can off our Hoss University. But you may have to tweak that to work for you because every area is different and your soils are just going to react different to different type of fertility. First thing I think you should do is get a soil sample. I've got an eight by three by 12 raised bed. Will it be deep enough for squash or pickles? Yeah. Yeah. Strawberries and potatoes. Uh, let's talk about pickles just a minute. i tell you what I would do there. If you got a raised bed like that, plant you some of these hostinated pickles and trellis them up. And that won't take up as much as room because you're going to grow them up. As far as squash goes, squash can get kind of, you know, big, but they don't last long. So, yeah, I think you got enough room. Strawberries don't take much room at all. Potatoes don't take a whole lot of room. So I think you can grow all four of those. When do you plant pumpkins? I've been feeding them to my dad's cows and they love them. Hmm. Carlin, here in the south, we could be planting them right now. In fact, I live in zone six. Oh, zone six? Man, I think probably about the end of the month would be a good time for you to plant. End of the month, first of June, I think would be perfect for you to direct seed those pumpkins. What type of insects will I have them in my sweet potato slips? I've had them in the ground for about two weeks now that I got from y'all. They're taking off and looking great. You know, you're going to have the normal things to look out for, aphids, worms. Uh, keep an eye on army worms. If you don't, <laughs> they, they can slip up on you, so you want to keep an eye on those. Normally speaking, we don't have much pest problems at all with our sweet potatoes. We normally don't have to do a whole lot. Just keep an eye on things. And if you start having a worm problem, you're going to have to hit them pretty hard. You're going to have to hit them quick. You don't want the worms to get out of hand on you. Uh, aphids, normally not too bad, but if they get tough on you, go ahead and treat for those as well. That's the biggest two things I would watch out for. Bermuda grass and a clay soil. B, the, the, the middle grass is tough. Just aggravate it to death. Keep it tilled up. Keep it worked and just keep after it. And eventually you'll get a handle on it. It can be problems. Same thing with nut grass. Cheryl wants to know how quick will the sheet rock be available to the plants? Pretty quick. Pretty quick, Cheryl. A lot quicker than eggshells would be. <laughs> So don't go down to eggshell root and put eggshells out there because eggshells going to take a while. That gypsum should be available pretty quick. Help it by busting it up a little yeah. bit. But yeah. Linda says it was too much work pulverizing it. Yeah. How 
How do you recommend keeping birds from getting into your tomatoes and blueberries? Well, that's a tough one out there. Uh, what did you do? <laughs> you put that in of yours, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. I ordered some netting and that on my strawberries, and that did seem to work. Yep. The year before, I had some bigger netting. This year, it was smaller. Yep. I don't really have a problem with them on my tomatoes, but the strawberries was bad. Robert wants to says garden lime helped me with. And I had blossom in rock. Robert, garden lime sometimes does have calcium in it, so you are correct there. But you got to be really careful adding lime just for blossom in rock because lime can throw your pH way out of whack and cause you. A lot more problems in your blossom in rot. So don't use lime specifically for blossom in rot. There's a lot of better, better products out there that will not affect your pH that'll give calcium to the plant. Never apply lime without, uh, without knowing what your pH is. This is a good question. What can I spray on my asparagus for weed control in Michigan? Not the nothing I'm no. worried about. Barry, we just let the grass and weeds grow up in there and then at the what? We, we mow it and then mow go it down. There. If you're going to have asparagus bed, you're going to have weeds. That's just part of it right there. Mulch sometimes will help, but uh, yeah. It seems to have gotten worse Common over the years. Problem. Yeah. Common. Eric, Eric, you bring back a lot of memories to me. Thank you for your advice. Papa would put the dust in a pantyhose and shake it. Mm -hmm. Old folks back in the day probably didn't worry about the bees and pollinators too much. You are so right. And I can't tell you the times I have done that. They used to even around here have these old dusters. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. The, the pump dusters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've done the same thing. I put it in pantyhose, walked out there with shorts on and shook it out there on the plants. I can't tell you how many times we did it. Uh, and we didn't worry about pollinators because we had wild bees back in the day. It didn't matter. Nowadays, it's a big thing because we don't have these wild bees anymore. So we have to be a lot more precautious about that than we did back in the day. The thing about seven was it would wipe out everything. Mm -hmm. You didn't put seven out there for worms. Seven dust would take care of aphids. It would take care of everything. It would wipe slate clean. It was Works extremely well. It works too good. That's part of the problem. Yeah. I think it's really good stuff and bad stuff. Yep. Uh, Vicki, yes, you can call customer service tomorrow if you have any questions. Or shoot us what might be even better is shoot us an email to cussserve at hostels.com yep. with your list of questions and we'll get them answered. This one? Mm -hmm. Uh, Terry, happy Mother's Day. Onions, taters getting big. Tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, you've got it all going on. Sweet corn. Tennessee, seven by you go, Terry. All right, what is a good fertilizer? And you still have a fertilizer for blueberry plants. Gary from North Florida. Hey, Gary, hope you're doing well. I see you've been in, doing that grand, baby. Uh, we don't carry a, we carry a 1010 all in one that you could use for blueberry plants. However, I would rather use a product that's got sulfur in there. So blueberries love sulfur. Ammonia sulfate would be good to put a little bit on there, but try to find you a good balanced fertilizer that's got sulfur in there. Any of your good blueberry fertilizer is going to have ammonia sulfate or some type of sulfur in there. And that helps lower that pH. Hope it helps. Do zinnias grow good in sandy Florida dirt? I would think so. Oh, yeah. Zinnias, sunflowers. How am I enjoying the sitting rays? Very much. Although today, when in the middle, in the heat of the day, um, I did sit on the metal part by accident. It was hot. Ooh, it was hot. Richard yeah. told you happy Mother's Day to me. I know. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. I'm in, let's see. Eric says, I'm in North Alabama. Is it too late to plant peacock purple hole peas? Eric and peas and cow peas love the heat. You should be fine. 
What is availability on high wheel hose? We got plenty of them, Barry, so we can get shape on all of our wheel hose this year. Yeah. What would cause a tomato plant to start wilting? They're getting plenty of water. Could be a couple different things. You may want to check, make sure you don't have any cut worms chewing on the base of that plant. You could have some kind of disease moving in on you. So it could be a disease or a cut worm. Most of the time, aphids and things like that won't necessarily cause them to wilt to the point you start noticing them. So I wouldn't think it would be a sucking insect, but I do think it could be cut worms. Cut worms or, or, or you say you're giving them plenty of water, that might be a little bit of a problem. You may start having some disease in the root system that are causing that problem. So I would probably back off the water just a little bit. Rocker Mom says, what's the best organic squash bug and stink bug killer? They've invaded my zipper peas. Spinosad Garden Insect Spray is the best one, most potent organic spray that there are out there. So if you want to go that route and you want to stay organic, that's going to be your best one. Now, that being said, she's in Florida. If you don't get them in the nip stage, you're not going to get them. If they get to the adult stage, they're going to eat that spin of and they're going to laugh at you. So <laughs> if they've gone to the adult stage, you're going to have to move on to something like Bug Buster 2, which is not organic, but it didn't have any residual out there to get into your peas. So you're going to be okay with that. But if you want to stay organic, spin of sad and you got them, hit them early. Do we have any netting for blueberries in pot? No. I ordered mine for my strawberries from the big box store. She said they're laughing at her now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's 752. We're going to wrap this up and get off of here. Had a busy day. I still got some things to do. Hope y'all have had a great Mother's Day. And as someone said, to all the babies and the fur babies, too. We got a fur baby. Yep. She was glad to see us. So y'all have a good rest of the evening, and we'll see you next time.